Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And guys, today I got a great video for you because I know this is something that scares each and every one of you, is when you get your dreaded, dreaded cholesterol results from your doctor and he says, listen, Mary, Steve, Bill, your cholesterol is too high or your LDL is too high. So today what I'm going to do is hopefully help put you at ease and tell you exactly how to understand your LDL cholesterol, that this is not the villain that it's all cracked up to be, that it does some good things. But I'll tell you, if you have the wrong kind of LDL cholesterol, that's where you get into trouble. So you want to make sure you watch this video to the very end, because I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about your cholesterol findings, your test results, what's the best kind of test to get. Listen, if your doctor's scaring you, you definitely want to watch to the end, because I'm also going to tell you exactly how you can reverse this, things that you're doing that may be causing your LDL to go bad. So anyway, like I said, watch to the very end. You're going to be glad you did and tell anyone else who's worried about their cholesterol, who's getting, you know, bad cholesterol results from their doctor or bad, you know, test results. Tell them about it too. Share this video with them. Make sure you like, you share, you comment, you subscribe and click that little bell notification so you get notified each and every time I post a video. And guys, if you want help with your keto course, if you're trying to do the keto diet and you're one of my keto warriors and you're saying, Dr. Nick, this is too hard. I can't figure this out. Check out my keto course. I guarantee you it is the best course that you're going to find anywhere on the internet. And there's a link right below in the description and we'll get you help right away. And join our family, join our family of keto rock stars. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this. So like I said, understanding LDL cholesterol is like, it's like the Rubik's Cube. It's like, how do you figure this out? It's like, you know, it's very, very hard to understand. So we're gonna help you figure this out. So anyway, first of all, understand this. LDL is the most vilified cholesterol and cholesterol is the most vilified macronutrient in our entire diet. This has been totally vilified for about the past 50 years because of this guy. So you want to talk about villains. It's not the other guy with the tying the damsel to the tracks. It's this guy right here. Ansel Keys single-handedly changed and transformed the way that we look at fats and cholesterol in the American diet and around the world. This guy absolutely destroyed the way we look at fats as a healthy food and turn it into a absolute disaster. Because he started a study called the Seven Country Study. And in the Seven Country Study, he really looked at about 23 countries, but because it wasn't giving him the information he wanted, he cherry picked the information and brought it down to about seven. So he started looking at some of these countries and the ones that didn't fit on his little graph, well, we just kind of omitted those and we're not gonna talk about them. So shh, keep it quiet. But all these other studies totally disproved this hypothesis. Not only that, this is post-World War II, where a lot of these countries were rebuilding and they didn't have a lot of the meats and things like that that they could be eating, so a lot of them were eating vegetables. And he looked at it and said, see, in the countries that are eating the vegetables, they have the lowest incidence of heart disease. But meanwhile, they had been eating meat previously. So he kind of just omitted certain things that did not fit in with his lipid hypothesis. Notice this is not the lipid law, but yet it has changed the way we look at fats, changed the way we look at cholesterol, changed the way our country is making dietary modifications and dietary recommendations for decades. And I guarantee you this has cost a lot of lives and a lot of poor health. So fortunately, over the decades, we've kind of gotten a little smarter about this and started looking at this and thinking, well, maybe cholesterol is not all as bad as it's cracked up to be. So we're starting to see over here where Time Magazine ran an article where, of course, sad face, and then maybe cholesterol is not that bad. And then right over here in this one, one of the more recent ones from a couple of years ago, they're saying, hey, eat your fat. Fat's great for you. Eat your butter. In fact, it's not the villain that we used to think it is. In fact, it's maybe in this article talks about the carbohydrates that we're eating. Hint, hint, till we get to the very end. A little bit of a uh, preface for what's coming down the road. Well, anyway, what is cholesterol anyway? Well, cholesterol is basically a waxy substance that we have inside our bodies in abundance. It is one of the most prized materials in our body, and it's what our bodies want to conserve and save. In fact, our brain 
is about 60% of our brain is fat and 25% of that is cholesterol. In fact, 25% of all the cholesterol in your body is in your brain, so it's absolutely necessary. Nerve fibers contain cholesterol, used to tissue repair, make vitamin D, make hormones, make enzymes. I mean, every single sex hormone that we have, from testosterone to estrogen, progesterone, is all made from cholesterol. It starts from cholesterol, so guys, ladies, this is really, really important. You absolutely need cholesterol. It is not the villain that it's been made out to be. What is cholesterol also? Well, you have HDL and LDL. And HDL, well, that's the da 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 da. That's the one that everybody thinks is great. Well, HDL, you gotta, we, taught, we were taught in school, keeps the highs high and the lows low. So HDL, high density lipoprotein. And by the way, little quick fact, HDL and LDL aren't even cholesterol. They are actually carrier molecules lipoproteins you see cholesterol is very fatty so it doesn't like to be inside the bloodstream because the bloodstream is water and when you mix water and fat together they don't get along too well so the only way that you can transport cholesterol through the bloodstream is with these little boats okay we call it lipoproteins okay lipid and protein put together and that's how you carry cholesterol through the bloodstream now that means this is not even cholesterol right here but anyway for another argument, HDL is thought of the good cholesterol because what that does is it goes around all the parts of the body, including the arteries, and takes the cholesterol out and brings it back to the liver for reprocessing. So it's thought of as a good thing because it's cleaning out the cholesterol from the arteries, which is a good thing, but at the same time, understand this. Why is the HDL bringing all the cholesterol back? Well, because it's so prized, it's so important, it's so valued by the body that it wants to save and conserve it so it brings it all back to the liver for processing. Well, what does LDL do? Well, LDL then brings it out as a transport molecule to all the different cells. Why? So you can make all your hormones. So this is really, really important. So LDL delivers cholesterol to the cells where it's used to make membranes. Every single membrane of your cell is made of fat and cholesterol. Once again, it's in the brain. It's used to make testosterone, estrogen, cortisol. All your hormones are made from cholesterol. Now, one important thing, I know you're all thinking, well, wait a minute, my doctor told me to limit how much cholesterol I eat. Well, your doctor, unfortunately, and I say this with all due respect, doesn't know what he's talking about because your doctor is used to old thinking. He doesn't realize that only 20% of your cholesterol in your body comes from your diet. 25% roughly, 75 to 80% comes from your liver. Your liver already knows how much cholesterol you need to make. So guess what? If your body takes in less cholesterol, so you eat less cholesterol, what do you think your liver is going to do? It's going to make more because your body knows exactly how much cholesterol it needs for antioxidants, for hormones, for repair, and it's going to make whatever it doesn't get in through the diet. So you can change your cholesterol by not eating so much, but your liver is going to make it anyway because your liver makes the majority of the cholesterol in your body. Now, knowing that, there's also a very, very important test. So when your doctor does your test, I know your results came back and they said, my, my cholesterol is too high. Well, your doctor's measuring total cholesterol. Well, total cholesterol doesn't tell you a lot because it doesn't really tell you LDL and HDL that much. But even more importantly, it doesn't tell you the particle size or the particles. The most important thing isn't your total cholesterol, it's the particles. The particles are what carry your cholesterol. Think of your particles as, as a boat or a bus. Your boat or your bus carries your people. A boat carries people when you're on the ocean, a bus carries people when you're driving around town. So your particles are what carries cholesterol inside. So what's more important when you're in traffic? The amount of people on the road or the amount of cars on the road? Now think about that, okay? You're driving around and what's making the traffic? The people or the cars? Right, the cars are making the traffic. You could have 10 people in one car or one person in one car. It doesn't matter, the car is still what's dictating the traffic. So the most important thing to think about when it comes to measuring your cholesterol isn't your total cholesterol, it's your particles. Now, of that, what's important with that is particle size. You see, size does matter. So what doctors should be doing is an NMR lipid profile test. Nuclear magnetic resonance imaging 
test to test your lipids. It tests your particles. It tests the particle size. So the NMR lipoprofile test, it's an advanced cardiovascular diagnostic test used to measure LDL particle number and size of LDL particles, also direct measurement of HDL and VLDL. So it measures the particles, the particle size, it measures LDL, it measures VLDL. Did you know there was a VLDL? Very low density lipoprotein. So this is a whole lot more specific than just measuring total cholesterol. So if your doctor does that, he's not measuring what's important. You want this kind of test, because like I said, Ladies, guys, size does matter, okay? Or at least in particles it does. Anyway, particle size matters because you want bigger, fluffier particles rather than the small, dense particles. So when they're measuring this with the NMR lipoprofile test, they want to measure and see if you have larger particles that are above 25 nanometers or smaller, denser particles less than 25 nanometers. Because what it says is this, Size determines whether the LDL particles will accumulate in the walls of the arteries causing heart attack or even stroke. So size matters when it comes to that. So it's not, once again, I don't want to keep beating this up. It has nothing to do with the amount of total cholesterol you have. It doesn't even have a lot to do with how much LDL to HDL you have. What really is important is of the LDL, do you have large or small particles? That's the important part to know. Why? When they do this measurement, you're going to get two different measurements. One is called the LDLP number, which is called LDL for low density lipoprotein particle number. So there's different numbers. So when you have this particle, an LDL particle, you want to know how many we have. So if you're under a thousand, so if your measurement comes back or your test results come back under a thousand, that's optimal. What if you're a thousand to about 1299? So 1299, well, that's near or above optimal, okay? What about if it's 1300 to 1599? Well, now you're in borderline high risk. So now you're in risk area. If you're at 1600 to 2000, you are high risk. And if you're above 2000, you're very high risk. Okay, so remember those numbers because those numbers are key because you're going to combine those with other numbers now. The second set of numbers are what is the small LDL particle number? In other words, how much are small to how much are large? So like I said, the other one tells us how many particles we have. This tells us now of the particles, how many small ones do we have? So what we find is this, if we're under 700, that's a safe number to have. If we're above 700, now we have increased risk, right? So how do we put this all together? Well, if you take these two numbers, and now look here. Now we look to see what area of risk are we in. If you have the highest risk is a high number of LDL particles and small particles. So if you have high LDL, once again, in those ranges of 1600, 1700, 1900, 2000, if you're in those ranges, you have high numbers of LDL particles and a high number of small particles. So of the LDL, the majority of them are small, you're at a very high risk. You're at very high risk of heart disease. Now, what if you have a high number of LDL, okay? So once again, those numbers, when you're looking at 1300, 1,500, 1,700, 1,900, 2,000, remember those? If you have those, but you have large particles, so all of those, the majority of them are large fluffy particles, well, you're higher risk, but you're not as high. Now, look over here, low risk. Now you have a low number of LDL particles, but they're small, okay? Once again, we're looking at particle amounts, and if they're big or small. So each one of these quadrants here talks about how many LDL particles do we have and of the ones that we have, are they big or small? Here we see, once again, a low number of LDL particles, which puts you at a lower risk, but they're small particles, which are the dangerous ones. And by the way, why are they dangerous? Because when they're smaller, they can embed in the walls of the arteries. And when they embed in the walls of the arteries, they can oxidize and they can form that plaque. Now, what is the lowest risk? Well, the lowest risk is obviously going to be the lowest number of LDL particles 
and the larger ones. So once again, the lowest number of LDL particles and the light fluffy ones, because we said earlier, the smaller dense ones are the bad ones, the light fluffy ones are the good ones. So you want to compare and see when you get your two sets of numbers, your LDL particle number and then your small LDL particle number, where do you fit in this quadrant? And that will determine then your risk factor. Now, how do you get, like I said, watch to the end because I'm going to tell you then how do you get these particles smaller? Well, if they all come out of the liver and they're a certain size, how do some of them get made into smaller particles to where they become dangerous? Well, that's all about diet. So guys, this is the key right here. Your diet is going to determine if you're going to make large fluffy LDL particles or small dense LDL particles. Once again, the larger ones above 25 nanometers or the smaller ones below 25 nanometers. The ones that are healthy, the ones that will get embedded in the walls of your arteries and actually give you potential heart disease or stroke. What determines whether you're going to make light fluffy particles or small dense ones? Your diet. Now, if you're eating a lot of vegetables and things that are healthy like that where it's less inflammation, you're going to make healthy particles. You're going to make light fluffy particles. If your diet, however, is rich, and if you're going by the food pyramid that we originally had where it was all grains at the bottom, if in breads, rice, pasta, cereal, you're going to take those particles as they come out of the liver and convert them into the small ones, the smaller, deadlier ones. That's the key. I'm going to repeat that. If you're eating rice, grain, pasta, cereal, bread, wheat, all your grains, that's going to cause this high carb diet, that's the main thing, it's all high carbs. It's going to cause you to form the smaller, denser particles. It's been proven through research. So if you want to stay healthy, you've got to stop eating all the heavy carbohydrates and eat a lot more vegetables and you're going to make a lot better particles, a lot healthier particles and your heart and your veins and your arteries will love you for it. So anyway, Guys, I hope this is great information for you. I hope you got a lot out of it, and I hope you change your diet. Realize that, hey, number one, like I said, know your test results. Know what they really mean. Don't go just by total cholesterol. Know your cholesterol amounts and know what the particle amounts are. From the particle amounts, know if you've got a lot of LDL particles, and if you do, what are the sizes of them? Are they the smaller particles or the larger particles? So go back and watch this video over and over because you want to make sure you understand the test results so when your doctor scares you with them, you say, hey, I know how this works. I can figure this out. Let me see my test results. Yep, yep, yep. I have this many particles. The particle size is this. I'm okay. I'm fine. So even if my cholesterol is high, my total cholesterol, I'm still good. Anyway, guys, like I said, I hope this is great information for you. I hope you are well equipped now to be able to read your test results and not, not going to let your doctor scare you at all. Anyway. This is Dr. Nick. I love and appreciate you. Please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and more importantly, subscribe and click that little bell notification so that you get notified every single time I put out a video. Like I said, guys, check out my keto course in the description below. I love and appreciate you. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.